Hey friends, it's Brian here, and uh, I've got another project. Surprise, surprise. And that's kind of all I do on my channel. But it's not the bus behind me. That just made a great backdrop that's nearby. So, I rescued, or found, a 1990 Ford F-350 with a 7.3 motor and a 5-speed CF transmission. And it's a lot on the rough way. And this is going to be my new project. Uh, I need a bigger truck for some of the things I do, and this will fit the bill. I've already phosphatized these rails. That's why they're not rusty like the ones over there. Um, so, um, right now I'm just, I, I had kind of gotten a soft start on it. I was cheating on y'all. Um, and what I've done at the moment is taken the battery trays out. And I, that one I can't get out, so I've just treated it where it's at. Knocked all the rust off of it they look like this when I started I suppose you could use this for a battery cable but your battery cables should be strong enough well enough that they don't pull out because when you've chopped off half the strands and it pulls out guess what it doesn't work worth a shit so today's project is I'm going to pull this out and remake it uh, this is a three odd, but this is a really lousy cable. It's not very flexible. I don't even know if it's the right kind of wire, to be honest. I mean, it looks kind of like it is, but it's really not a nice battery cable. I've already taken the cross connect cable out um, and really can't do anything with the truck until I get the, the battery situation taken care of because this is a hot mess. Anyway, all right, so let me get this other end of this cable loose. They uh, burned up a starter before my ownership. It doesn't look like they installed the new one right either, so they were going to burn this one up soon too. Anyway, uh, we got to get the cable loose and extricate it from this greasy, nasty mess down here. So let me get set up for this. All right, so I think that's a three-quarter inch. And I doubt I have the right size ratchet with me. There it is, and it is a five eighths. Now, where in the devil did Oh, I hate spiders, and there sure are a lot of them under this truck. All right, so so the way this works is power comes in on this. And this is a solenoid, it's an electrically operated switch. So when you send a signal via the small wire, which should be back here, it closes this big electrical switch, which has a big spring in it, and powers the motor. But that is not nearly tight enough. This, uh, depending on which starter they put in, this is anywhere from 120 to a 300 amp draw on the uh, batteries and you have two 750 cold cranking amp batteries which is 1500 amps of 12 volt dc power so that's a lot it's just a lot a lot a lot and this is loose i just wonder any of this shit didn't catch on fire to be honest all right so let me go find the size for that and i'll be back all right so i think it's a 3 8 and it's not tight, but this is a really bad thing to do with a big diesel motor. These things vibrate even fully tightened. Um, bolts loose. So having, well, maybe, maybe not, I can't really see. Oh, there it is, and well, there it went. All right, so that's loose. Let me find that bolt. So, I 
need to bend this open all right so apparently this model comes with a power steering leak pretty bad one at that uh, and it's been protecting the frame from corrosion with power steering fluid for quite some time so we need to bend this open Let's see if I can position this camera This could have come out from down there, but it looks better on camera to pull it out here. And plus I get to mess with this. Pretty sure that's wrong, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm really pretty certain that this is wrong. So this goes to the starter, and I think that goes to the ignition switch. And the way this is supposed to work is that goes there, and where does this red wire go? This goes to the glow plugs. What the fuck? So this is a starter relay. And it's not hooked up right. So you should have 12 volts going across this to ground, across the small terminals, which close the contacts energizing the large terminals. And so one should go from the battery, and the other should go down to the starter. And this is jacked the fuck up. No wonder this truck wouldn't start. It never had a chance. It wasn't wired right. All right, so we're going to do some gremlin deletes, and then this is a four-gauge fusible link. Probably goes to the alternator. We're going to just have to trust absolutely nothing on this. But anyway, this is loose, so let's go take this apart and fix this. So I need a way to crimp this, so I bought a Temco TH0007, uh, and it's a hammer crimper. This isn't as nice as some other styles, but this will work. And the way it works is you secure it to your bench with screws. washers on a decent screw and they just screw it in all right that holds that still all right so let's go ahead and take this apart chunks of it are headed so this is a two odd gauge cable that's okay but three odd is better and that's what it calls for 
So that's what we're going to install. And one of the challenges with this, aside from not being very flexible, it didn't crimp very well. This side's okay, but of course the other side's not. So we're going to make a new one, but first we got to bend it and figure out how long it is. Entirely to the building wire. It's too, too stiff to be in a vehicle. So I have some 3 op, which is almost the same size, but it's much, much finer strands. And it will it's actually rated for batteries and welding cable. So we're going to do a rough field measurement here. And I think it should be about here. the cross connect cable out of 3 odd even though that's overkill. So I have some nice heavy duty 3 odd tin cable connectors that are 3 8 on the end. And I have a extra starter because yeah they put a second one in. This one has a bad solenoid. So what we're going to do is decide how much of this to take off. Now, there are better ways to do this, but these are the tools that I have on my workbench and I didn't take too many strands off, so I think that's okay. Also got some heat shrink tubing here. It comes in 400 sizes. Actually, it's one inch, three quarter inch, five eighths. Looks like it's going to be a three quarter inch. Uh, this wasn't that expensive. Uh, it's made by the same company that makes the terminals. Temco and Cellterm seem to be the two dominant players. Uh, Temco has an office not far from Houston in, in beautiful Brenham, Texas. Alright, so we'll put that there. Okay, so let's see how this works. Alright, so you lift this up and you put this in here. And you just smack it with a three to four pound sledgehammer. That's all there is to it. I don't feel 
like I beat that hard enough, so I'm gonna stick it back in here again. There, extra dead. Alright, and then that will just get the heat trunk. Let me get the heat gun. Alright, so I have a little heat gun. So we'll let that warm up. Well, I guess you guys might want to see this. So we got a good nice crimp. We just slide this down and then we're going to heat this up and that'll cause it to to uh, shrink the plastic. It is a slow process, but that's okay. These are nice, thick uh, heat shrink boots. That's all there is to it. Yeah, so now we get to do the other end. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process where I determine how much of the coupling that I want to, or how much of the wire I want to strip off. done this first. In fact, actually, having some hand issues so I'm going to take a break for a minute. So I have a little bit of an issue with this being mangled at the end so I'm going to take some of this mangle off.
So what I've got is I've got some wires that are the, the bands of them are, are just bent at the very end and it makes the end wider than it should be. hoping not to have that but I don't really think it's going to change the price of tea in China so we're just going to delete these this is not a best practice but losing 20 strands in a wire that's one gauge larger than it needs to be and that is a lot finer than it needs to be isn't really going to hurt anything so we're just going to move forward this covered up and it'll be ready to go. So let me get the heat shrink gun going and then we'll get that part started. heat output on high speed so I'm just going to revisit the other end on here. Alright, now I need to go look up what size wire is supposed to be. Well, actually, you know what, so we got, we got both ends made and it's ready to go back to the truck, but I need to determine um, what size the other wire is supposed to be and so i need to go find the wiring diagram i'll be back so we want to take this apart and figure out what is going on here involves some really low quality electrical tape. Hmm. 
that's a really nice connection. Not. So it broke off the wire and we just bobtailed another one on there. No, I don't think we're going to put this back in. We're going to make a new one. Let me go find some wire. Alright, so I don't have any number 12 wire, which is what this should be, but probably isn't. So we will go ahead and start in on making the other cable um, just to make good use out of everything that's out and ready. So this is what's wrong with what they had done. I mean, how are you going to get 300 amps through that? You're not. So we have more than enough here. So let me go check this on the truck over right back. All right, I'm gonna do bad things and see if I can. There we go. Hey, that worked. That's a halfway decent cut. couple of strands that aren't inside the fitting. So we'll just clip those off. The rest of this looks really good, so let's go ahead and beat it. So it's time to make another one, and we're we'll slide that piece on. We'll measure that. strands, not a big deal. Again, a couple strands loose. We'll get fired up and I'll be right back. So one of the things I'm doing is just writing 
battery on both ends, so I know that that's the battery cable, and then the other one is going to get marked as S. So I know this is the starter cable. All right, that's all we can do today. So uh, catch up with me next time. I'm going to make the ground cables, and I will um, be working on other parts of the truck. Um, but for now, this is all I can do today. Well, I mean, I've got some painting going on, but you guys know how to paint, so that's there's nothing going on there. Nothing to see. Thanks for watching.